Hello and welcome to another CAD clip lesson on Revit structure. Um, we're talking about a flat sloped roof in this lesson and I'm starting with the final product here and I've dragged some of the views onto my sheet and what we're going to do is um, go through this as much of a, a as a demonstration as it is a lesson and I just want to show you what we'll end up with and then we'll delete it all and we'll um, we'll start from scratch. So we uh, will create a nice structural um, roof framing plan here. We're talking about a slope. This is a uh, low point in the roof here and we've got another low point over here. So we're sloping toward this point and then we're sloping along this ridge, ridge back to this one. And then we've got a section in there. We have unlimited 3D views we can create of whatever we want to zoom into. So there's a bottom view and then a top view of our low point in the middle where our roof drain would be. And there's a nice detail that we can do on there. Okay, We can do many details. And then there's the 3D view of the roof. And I've exaggerated the slope a little bit just so we can see it visually. And then from this point, we'd be um, ready to print. We've got our title block information over here with all of our logos and our project information from our parameters that all gets put in here quite nicely okay so I'll zoom out a little bit okay and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna go delete and I'll delete all these views and reverse engineer this okay I'm gonna go to my 3d view up over here okay there's my model okay and I can zoom in we're gonna build this right now from scratch okay Notice the joists are all sloping down. Okay, we can make this a tie joist in the middle or a beam. It's up to us. Okay, again, I've exaggerated my slope. So you've got, you can put a scupper or whatever we want. So there's our model. Okay, and I'm just going to go click it all and delete it. No problem. Oh, one more column to delete. Okay, now I'm going to go to my level two delete my cross section it's gonna say do you want to delete it yes now it disappears from over here I'm left with my basic grid well I'm gonna to go to my level one I'm gonna put a slab in here to start with to kind of ground me so I'm gonna start by going to my basics I'm just gonna go draw a slab okay I'm gonna check my properties six inch slab at level one looks good I'm gonna use the lines option click on the rectangle put myself an eight inch overhang Pick some points over here, click, escape, escape, finish. There's my slab sitting down there on my level one. Good. Go to my level two. Going to quickly draw some columns and some beams in here. So on my basics, I'm going to go to structural column. I'm going to click on there. I'm going to go over here and say, okay, I'm going to do it based on depth, not height, down to level one. And I'm going to place by grid intersections. I'm going to pick on there. And then I have to pick. I'm going to hold my mouse in. And then I'm going to release. It's going to temporarily place all my columns. I finish. Now I'm going to do the same with beams. Oh, notice when I did my structural column, I could have picked what type of column I want in here too, by the way. Beams. Beams, oh, we only want a 12-inch deep beam whatever we want we can load more okay I'm going to set my usage to automatic I'm gonna use the grid option again on level 2 same thing picking on here it's gonna find all those grid intersections picking letting go finish kinda of like a sketch mode thing adds those columns in escape escape go to my 3d view and there are my beams and columns all nicely done with my analytical model etc back to my level two now I'm gonna add in my beam systems and I'm gonna use joists specify the span okay before we start sloping these this is my low point here and this is going to be my low point over here before I start to slope these beams down okay I want to put my beam system in so I'm gonna to go to modeling and I'm gonna say beam system my beam system, I'm going to use a nice 26 inch deep OWSJ. I'm going to set my spacing to be fixed number of six. That's what my engineers told me. And I'm going to click on here. Notice that depending on where you click will give you the span direction. I'm going to pick on there. Basically going to work my way around all six bays because they're all sloping towards the middle. 
picking on there okay after I select and place all of these beam systems okay I'm going to take these four beam ed ends and slope them down toward to that column to make a low point panning over picking on here and again I can change my spacing and my span whatever I want inside of here doesn't really matter I'm just trying to do it like the previous uh, the model I opened up with okay hit escape and there I have a nice flat system now I could take this and copy and paste it up to a multi-story and create you know a high-rise instantly and then work on the roof we'll assume this is the the roof level up inside of here okay now the other thing I notice is that my joists I forgot to give my four inch vertical offset because they're not sitting on top of the beam so I need to fix that I'm gonna go back to level two just to show you I'm gonna hover over here I'm gonna click and I'm gonna use my control button and hover and select all of wait for the green dashed lines because that's my beam system now that I have them all selected I'm gonna say oh the elevation of those beam systems is four inches above where I place them on level two hit OK hit escape back to my 3d view now my joists are all nicely sitting four inches above my beam level my top of steel okay if I go down to a side out elevation I've got a couple levels I've got my level two I've got my level one with my slab and I've got a level called RD roof drain which is a foot and a half below my top of steel level two so far so good looks great back to my 3d view okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start sloping my beams and everything will carry down so I'm gonna pick on this beam and holding my control button in I'm gonna pick on this beam now the trick here is that you have to know kind of which is the start and end of the beam because I'm gonna go in and drop these down based on a number okay of minus one and a half feet the trick is of course I've gone through knowing where the start and end of the beam is when we do automatically you don't really know so you almost have a 50 50 chance of getting it right and maybe there's a way of determining it I haven't yet found that out but I know for a fact that these two have a start here and work away from the center point so I'm gonna go into here and use start level because this is the start of the beam and the end of the beam minus 1.5 feet which is 18 inches now after I do this it's gonna um, do a little bit of regenerating and it's gonna slope all those joists down and after it regenerates there and you see the processing take place it warns me that the element this element will be detached from its original plane and there's 12 of them and that's because one two three four five six seven and then you can hit next and look you can see the warnings going through each one that's fine I expect those because that's the whole purpose was to this beam system down I'm gonna just escape and shift middle mouse button we can see what we've done there okay now I'm gonna take these two beams because they end at that column I just happen to know that using my control button to pick on those two guys I'm gonna go into here same thing end elevation minus 1.5 feet I don't have to say feet and I hit OK and then it processes through and it does the same warning no problem oh that's what I wanted to do escape escape there we go shift middle mouse button now I probably want to drop this column down as well I'm gonna pick on that column I'm gonna to go to here and say the top offset of that column is level 2 minus 1.5 feet okay and then you'll notice also I'm gonna hit escape that the analytical the stick frame here is still up there so I probably want to fix that too I'm gonna to pick on my column go to here go down to here top vertical of the analytical model is at the top of the column not auto detect hit escape okay and there we have it shift middle mouse button okay everything looks good and can do the same thing the same process with this last beam over here by picking on here going into the properties and that was a start offset of minus 1.5 feet and then I hit OK and once again Revit gives us our great warnings and we hit OK and then I've got my click out I've got my low point over there okay
So now that's really the uh, the framing. Now I just need to create some views of this. Okay, I've got some views from previous exercises. I'm going to click on here and I'm going to use my shift middle mouse button and delete all these. This is my main 3D view. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start, I'm going to say duplicate this view. And then I'm going to right click on that duplicated view. I'm going to say rename and I'll just call this top close up. Okay, and then I'm going to turn my crop region on in this view. Show crop region because this is going to be my, my top close up. I'm going to take that. Tighten that right up. Okay, and that's going to be my top close up. I can do what I want with my view here. Now I'm going to take my top close up, right click and duplicate that view. Take that duplicated view and rename it. And call this bottom close up. Hit OK. And then I'm going to click on an object so I can get some focus. Shift middle mouse button. Move my angle around, click out, zoom out of that view. Again, I can pick on here and tweak this. Okay, so I've got my 3D view. Now I'm going to right click on my original and duplicate that one and rename that one because I want to leave the original. And I'm just going to call this, you know, 3D isometric. Okay, and inside of there, I'm going to turn my crop, show my crop region again. And then I'm going to tighten this up as I please. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to my level two. I'm going to do a couple of sections. So I'll go to my basics and I'll say, okay, I'd like to have a section right here, please. I'd also like to have another section over here. Thank you. And I'm going to take this guy and flip them this way and this one this way. So I've got my two sections now, section one and two. Okay. Now I'm going to go to what were my sheets and I'm going to right click on the sheet that was previously created okay and I'm going to delete it just so you see I got nothing up my sleeve and now I'm going to make a new sheet right click on sheets new sheet I'm going to use this as my title block in we go now I can take my level two that I made drag it on place it hit escape I'm going to go to my 3d views and say my 3d iso view oh looks kind of small I need to make it bigger double click back on that view and change my view scale from an eighth to maybe a quarter inch okay back to my sheets there it is a little bigger okay take that guy size it up I'm gonna go to my 3d views and say okay bring my bottom close-up oh I don't like the size of that I'm gonna go back to my bottom close-up and change that to be three quarters of an inch top close-up change my scale to be three quarters of an inch while I'm at it let's have a look at my sections section two uh, section one I'm gonna change to be uh, let's go one inch equals one foot no let's go three quarters inch okay let's go to my section two which is going the other way adjust this a little bit okay take this particular object and say hide annotation and current view because I don't need to see that view okay take this little bubble maybe bring it down take this guy bring it up bring that over kinda make it look nice okay turn my crop region off so I don't see it grab my grid line drag that up okay maybe add some break lines in here drafting detail component turn my construction off oh, I can't see it um, so I've got that in there got my section one same type of thing I can turn my crop region off not to show it okay tighten up all these with my grips and all that kind of stuff okay back to my sheet and I'll say okay let's bring in that 3d view there let's bring this 3d view in here let's bring this cross section in over here and let's bring this section in over here okay and then you can see the different scale levels on there okay go back to my 
this one and change my detail level to be three quarters of an inch equals one foot and of course it'll update itself on the sheet need to make a little bit of room by clicking on here and nudging this stuff around nudge nudge using my arrow keys I can just click and drag them as I please zoom in pick on here move that over bring this guy back over there okay so I've got my section here got my section there notice that it's numbering itself properly okay section two number six on the drawing and then if I go back to here of course you know my numbering section six on drawing three well this happens to be drawing f3 if I rename my drawing to be called you know details or plan sloped roof and then I call it S1, of course, with Revit, everything updates accordingly, okay? And then, of course, my title of my sheet all works out properly, slope roof detail, drawing S1. So now I've got my floor plan, my big 3D composite drawing. I've got my one 3D underside, my 3D topo close-up got a couple sections from here on in it's a matter of just creating as many sections and details as you want of the model and the other beautiful part of it is is I can click on this grid line and change this dimension and this will pull itself over it will readjust the entire bay on both sides respace them readjust the slope and right down to readjusting the detail so there's a quick lesson on how awesome Revit structure and how quickly you can create some really neat 3D drawings.